Christ and one another. We're located at 5998 Lanny Road on the extreme north side of Jacksonville, but we would love to have you visit one of our services in person. Our regular services are 11 a.m. on Sunday and 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so now let's go join one of our live services that's already in progress. Love story. They're all high. They're with my dear Redeemer. No more to die. Oh, yes, I live in glory by and by. I want to be of service along this pilgrim way and lead the lost to Jesus as fervently I pray. And day by day I travel. I'll keep him ever nigh and live with him forever. Frank, in between growling like that stomach, how about pray for us? <laughs> Be glad to. Thank you, brother. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to praise you tonight, Father. We do praise you. Allowing me another privilege to make it this way to your house, Father. Lord, I ask, Father, that you just praise you. open up hearts and minds tonight with the song service, Father. Prepare our hearts and minds for your word tonight, Father. Lord, I ask that you just feed us as only you can, Father. I pray for you one regular message tonight, Father. Lord, may you step aside and just um, preach your word, Father, as you give it to us, Lord. Lord, just, uh, be with us tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Anybody want to share a blessing with us tonight? Who wants to be first? Brother Donnie. I got a blessing. You know, the other day I called the city to uh, JA to get some uh, power hookup, maybe in the near future. Well, they brought it the next day. They said it wasn't going to rain until uh, July 9th. Wow. I kept some trees down two days later, and I had to get them trees down before I put that wire up to make it easy on me. Two days later, my neighbors called me and said, J.A.'s in your yard putting up the wire. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. So it, that was quick from the city. It is quick. Amen to that. All right. Page 124, 124, I'll be a friend to Jesus. I'd like to testify about that. I was looking at the song, and I wanted to ask you, and I mm. said, no, I know he has his songs in line, so I wouldn't ask you. God gave me the desire in my heart right there. Well, there you go. All right, Garney, I got it written down here in E. I might drop that down a half a step. D sharp E flat. They tried my Lord and Master with no one to defend. Within the halls of Pilate, he stood without. Him. I love him to the end. And while 
all on earth I'm living my Lord shall have a friend I'll be a friend to Jesus my life for him I'll spend I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end I'll do what he Each flying moment, prove that I'm His friend. I'll be a friend to Jesus. My life for Him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. To all who need a Savior, my friend, I rest. about another blessing? Yes, ma'am. Heaven's Jubilee, A flat. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, headed for the Jubilee, yonder in the skies. in us just one more go right ahead we went out fishing the other day we were driving down the road and i kept looking in the mirror and about the time i looked back my tag came off the trailer and i went man i'm glad i was looking amen uh, i wish i'd have pulled over sooner because it's about a quarter mile back i had to go <laughs> <laughs> okay i walked but it was a long way back there <laughs> like talking, if i had to buy another tag just because i wasn't paying attention yeah. to looking there would be a lot of money for no yeah. reason Oh, oh my goodness. God did that. Uh, yeah, I thank the Lord for that. That's those little things we talked about, isn't that, Donnie? Right. Donnie Amen. told that key story, if y'all missed it. That's right. It's those little things that you don't even think about sometimes. Yeah. The Lord's right there, yep. and He's got you covered. Yes, right. He does. Every day, all day. All right. This world is not my home. Page 146. 
key of G. 146. One forty six. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home. my home and Lord what will I do the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore they're all expecting me and that's one thing I know I fixed it up with Jesus 40 years ago I know it take me through though I am weak and poor and I can't feel at home You can be seated, all except the gospel sounds.
Praise the Lord. It's so good to see you tonight. I uh, appreciate the uh, good testimony about Bible study. I thank you for that compliment. What a, I think I get, a, I get more blessed than anybody I know. These teachers probably understand what I'm talking about whenever, because God pours it through you first, right? And, and so uh, what a blessing it is to be able to share God's Word and be able to eat at the same time. Um, and uh, what a blessing that we've been having as we've been um, moving uh, through the uh, book of the Revelation at a David Chase pace. And um, we are, we're into the, f yeah, about the third verse of the fourth chapter. So we've been doing that for like six months now, I think. <laughs> then we start the first of the year, I believe we started the first of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we've been, we've been burning it up. And uh, <laughs> the virus did come in. We can, we can blame it on that a little bit. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, <laughs> So Brother Michael was asking about uh, uh, praise reports, and I, you know, as I stood there, I got to thinking, I just, I, uh, there's a song, I don't know, the Rochesters do it, or, or one of the, um, uh, I, I want to just, I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything. Who is it? Yeah, it's Rock, Rochesters, <laughs> however you may say their name. Yeah, I want to thank you for everything. I just want to praise you, Lord, for all that you've done. Because I, as I began to think about, I thought to myself, man, they would not have time for me to tell of all the blessings that I feel like God's been pouring out in my life. I, if I, as I look back, and I probably, Brother Donnie, ain't counting all of them. I just, I'm sure there's been blessings that have come that I, I missed. I didn't pay attention. And, uh, but he's, he's always, always good. And he's always blessing in my life. And I just, I'm so grateful for it. I'm thankful for tonight to be able to be in this place tonight and see you guys. Amen. I'm grateful for that opportunity. And I want you to know that there's nothing in this world, I believe with all of my heart, just like the book of Romans tells us, there's nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Nothing going to stop us now. We're on our way. And it ain't us. It's all him. But there's nothing going to stop us because he's going to bring us through. And so tonight I want to take you to the book of St. Luke, chapter number 6. Chapter number 6, the book of St. Luke. 
subject title is Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Mm. Uh, are these, these are old prayer requests or what? Are they new? Brother Wade, are you typing in prayer requests? Are, yeah, are they new? Was the question? No. They're not new. Okay, I didn't think so. Okay, that's okay. I, I just want to make sure I wasn't missing somebody. So uh, we are. Uh, we want to remember Sister Waters in our prayer. The word was yesterday that she might get to come home today. I still haven't heard that final word yet. So praying that she will be tonight at 6 p.m. Um, at Nassau Funeral Home in Callahan when the storm was moving through. Um, Miss Clara Hunter's family was at the Nassau Funeral Home for the viewing of her daughter-in-law, Kathy. Uh, tomorrow at 11 a.m. at uh, First Baptist Callahan, uh, they will have her funeral. Um, my wife and I are planning to be there. If you'd like to go, I'll be glad to give you that information as we try to support that family and what they're going through. Uh, the Lord is just, um, he's, he's given us opportunity to reach into the lives of so many folks and to help them through their time. Uh, Rick Deese, Brother Richard's son, Rick, um, is also very nigh unto the time of cro crossing over. And uh, I was in, been in contact with his wife. Y'all remember him in prayer and her as she goes through this. And um, we, uh, the whole family, as a matter of fact, I just leave it at that. And so we want to remember those requests of prayer. Is there anybody else I can pray for real quick? Brother Frank? Uh, my classmate, Stephanie Whitherd, that lost her husband to cancer. Sure. She had a memorial service here in Florida, okay? She's, I think she left actually yesterday taking him to Illinois. For another service? For internment. And apparently with the family up there, there's a lot of drama happening up there that she has to deal with. So keep her in your prayer. Pray for Miss Stephanie. She travels and has to deal with that. Okay. Brother James? All right. Bless your heart, brother. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Brother David? Jarlene. She's doing better, but she's still got that bad cold. All right. All right, uh, Miss Lori Godwin asking for prayers tonight. All right. And uh, is that praise report new? Had, uh, he had more blood tests today for his kidneys, and the test results come back the same as the last, and he won't have to go back for dialysis anymore. So he's saying if they come back the same. Um, he's, he says, God is healing me. And he can't thank him enough. And he's uh, thanking all of you for praying for him. So y'all remember Mike Bailey in your prayers. Okay. And um, Frankie G asking for the prayers at the pulmonology. Oh, yeah? Oh, that G. Okay. Frank Gatlin asking for prayers that the... that the pulmonologist does not find anything unspoken request from Arizona. Okay, all right, certainly will. Uh, anybody else here tonight? Just remember me, Mark, I got an appointment, and also remember Brother A.L. Sweat. Brother A.L. Sweat, yeah, he's uh, at the point of passing also, is he not? He, Pretty bad. We were there last night at church, and he was very weak. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. He was at church? Yes, ma'am. God bless you. He's trying. Amen. Did you have your hand? Mm -hmm. Dana Clifton's younger son was Oh, oh my. Um, but T. Barney, this man was, his wife was having a baby, and he was trying to get to the hospital. So they both was rushed to the hospital, but seemed to be okay, but they going to get checked out. Okay. So okay, certainly will. Miss Dana's son, y'all remember him in prayer. All right, well, let's pray. Fathers, we come before you. We want to thank you most of all. 
I want to just give you glory and praise because your blessings far, far outweigh all of the issues of our life. God, you have been amazingly blessed, full, full of compassion and mercy to pour upon us in our lives, and I thank you for that. Tonight, as we come together, I pray, God, that the Word of God would reach the hearts of those who hear with a spiritual ear and will put to practice, God, the things that you reveal to us as you talk to us. We ask your blessings and your anointing on each request of prayer that was given tonight from the accident to the illness to the procedures uh, to the funeral to the traveling mercies and the drama issues and all the other things in this uh, particular arena that we talked about tonight. God, your, your hand is in it. Remind us that you're always at work around us all the time. We glorify you and praise you in all things. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 In the book of St. Luke chapter number 6, beginning in verse number 46. In chapter 6, beginning in verse number 46, and I want to thank you guys in the booth for for helping out tonight. Brother Gary's not able to be here, and uh, Miss Harley came over and got things started for Brother Wade, who was trapped by that accident, I believe. And, and so we're so grateful that um, you guys are here and able to help us get that done. Uh, but looking at your Bible, I want you to see in verse 46, Jesus says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. I'm going to talk about that tonight for just about that long. Okay? Uh, why call ye me Lord, Lord? And the first thing I want to do is I just want to, I want to just define the word Lord. You already know, I'm sure. The word Lord is a word that means supreme. It denotes uh, supremacy or supreme in authority. It talks about someone who is the controller or the master. It can also be used as a title like you would with Mr. or Sir or, or, or something like that, or Master. That would be a title also. Uh, but it, it, it conveys the idea of someone who has the authority. And Jesus says, why do you say to me, Master, Master, or Leader, Leader, my, my controller, my controller, my supreme authority, and then don't do what I say. Is that double-tongued? Is that a double standard? Is that hypocrisy? Amen. At his greatest, I mean, if we claim him as Lord... We're saying that we're following his directive. Amen. And Jesus said, why are you saying, Lord, Lord, why are you proclaiming me to the, to the position of supremacy in your life? And then you don't follow my directives. Stick with me. Don't go home and don't turn me off. Verse 47, verse 47 through verse 49, Jesus says, continuing, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and, what's that next word? And doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Now, you know, we spent, I think, I don't know if it was last message I brought or this past weekend or the week, I get confused with time frames, but I just talked to you about how uh, they accused Jesus of not being plain with them and speaking plainly. You know, when will you tell us plainly? How long will you make us doubt? Well, Jesus is always doing his very utmost to speak as plain as possible. And here he is, he's going he's, he's to give a, a very perfect laid out example of someone that hears the teaching of of Jesus and then does them and he's going to liken them to this individual. Here he goes. I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house 
This is how this man built the house. He digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house. That means violently. And could and could not shake it. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. <laughs> Jesus said, that's a man that hears my sayings and does them. He's like a man that goes to build a house and he digs down deep first, lays the foundation on a solid rock, the bedrock, and then builds the house so that when the storms of life rage, and they will, Amen. rest well assured, I don't care where you build your house, <laughs> what neighborhood is in, it's, there are going to be storms. And when the storms come and the stream beat against the house and the flood rose, it says, it, it, I like the wording Jesus used. He said, and it could not shake it. Could not. Not did not. Not happened not to. Not shook it a little bit. Could not shake it. Why? Because it was founded upon the rock. Ver, last verse, nine, uh, 49. Uh, but he that heareth. I could fill that in and say my sayings like he did in, 48, in verse 47. Um, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth or upon the ground or, or even upon, some say upon sand against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great or complete or a total loss. Tonight I just want to talk to you about the profession of Lord, Lord. Jesus gives a contrast here. A contrast is given not between two houses. He's not talking about the difference of two houses. The houses probably looked the same. Or maybe the one that was built just on the ground might have even looked a little better. Because this guy was obviously more concerned about the stuff above the ground than he was Amen. the stuff below the ground. So he might have decked his out. But the, 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 it's not a comparative between the two houses. It's not a contrast between them. And I would say to you, it's not even a contrast between the two builders. Uh, they, they, did, they took a different route. One of them chose to build on a foundation, and the other one chose not to use a foundation. But I'm not contrasting the, the two builders. I believe that the contrast is here is, is, is between having a, a solid foundation and having no foundation. Now, I want you to notice that Jesus, his wording is always perfect. And in verse number 49, he, he, does, he doesn't say that this guy um, put his foundation on the earth. He says he built without a foundation. Be careful to understand this. The first man digged down deep, found a solid rock, and then built the foundation upon the solid rock. The second man, who is the hearer and the not doer, is the man who doesn't even lay a foundation. He just starts building. Are y'all still with me? Amen. So the contrast in my mind is not between the houses, it's not between the builders, I believe it's between the foundation and the no foundation. And the reason I believe that it doesn't give an alternative foundation is because there is no other foundation. Hallelujah. 
So these houses were built by these two men. Now, uh, the, 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 the houses, I believe, would be equally strong built, built just the same, and, 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 and also equally would be the testings and the trials that come against these houses. These houses represent the lives of these men. And their, their lives are built similarly strong and similarly uh, well thought out, I believe. But one without a foundation and the other upon a foundation. And something else that's similar that comes along is the storms of life. In both verses we see that Jesus says that the streams beat vehemently upon the house. So there's an incredible storm that comes that rushes the water against the home and then the floodwaters rise so that the house that had no foundation could not stand at all. It didn't stand a chance. As much as we saw in verse 40, uh, 40, 48 that it said that it could not shake that house, in verse 49 that house could not stand. As much as it was impossible for the first one to fall, it was impossible for the second one to survive. And the difference? The foundation. The foundation. Oh my. Uh, when I saw this, I said, Lord, I thank you for this because I, 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 I ain't even got the punchline to you guys yet. Hold on. Um, the, the trials came to both houses, they were very equal. But the first man, I want you to notice what he did. Can we back up to verse 48? And I want you to look at what it is. It he, he says he's, a, he's like a man which built a house. Look what he did. He digged deep. Now, when I thought about him digging deep, this is what come to my mind. I thought about Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem. If anybody's ever read that story or you ever heard preaching on that story, do you remember the first thing that they had to do? They had to remove the rubble. You know why? Because you can't build on rubble. The walls have been broken down. And their first job, before they started mixing concrete, oh, come on, before they started popping lines on, on the sidewalk, before they started uh, getting ready to put up the new wall, they had to remove the rubble. And I think about this man as he's coming in and he knows that he's ready to start his life with Jesus. He's heard the teachings of the Lord. He's been convinced of his sayings and his life is going to be transformed. And the first thing he's got to do if he's going to walk with the Lord and he's going to stay with Jesus and he's going to finish with Jesus is he's got to dig down deep and he's got to get rid of all the rubble. He's got to move the trash out of the way, the broken stuff. I, I, I thought about the rubbish. I thought about moving the rubble out of the way. And, and it's, it's the ineffective materials, the things that he maybe had tried to build his house with before. Maybe, maybe he had had a house before and it was broken down. Maybe he realized it wasn't working. Maybe it was the ruins of his past. Maybe it was all the sins of his past that he had, to, he had to dig down past that because some of us here tonight, you ain't never got past the fact of how wicked you was so that you could allow Jesus to build your life up. You got to get that rubbish out of the way, man. You can't build a new life with Jesus till you move the rubbish out, dig down deep and find the solid rock. Or maybe it was the works of the present. Maybe, it, maybe having to move out of the way. Man, he might have been a follower of Jesus. I heard him many times. And maybe he had tried to find a way to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. But all of his good works kept getting in the way because he was a religious church man. And now he found out that I've got, if I'm going to build this relationship, I've got to dig deep. I've got to remove everything. I've got to get rid of all the stuff that hinders me. You've got to get down. Listen, I'm going to try to simplify. You've got to get down to the place where there ain't nothing but you and Jesus. You've you got to lay aside all of your works. 
you got to forget about who your mama or your grandmama or your daddy or your grandpappy or, 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 or whoever it may have been and whatever their credentials may be. You got to forget about your pedigree and you got to come to Lord Jesus knowing it ain't nobody but you, a poor sinner, and him, a great Savior. And then you got the foundation. Now you've hit the rock. There's a solid rock. Now you can begin to lay the foundation for the home. Oh my goodness. Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't about the works that he was in in the present time. Maybe it was plans he had for the future. Maybe, maybe he had to throw those things away. Whatever it is, whatever has been haunting you, maybe it's... Mm, Sins and habits. And these, these carnal influences that's in my life. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. That constantly want to eat my lunch. Amen. That constantly beset me. Every, the, this, the, it's like the sin that so easily besets me. I'm trying to run the race and there's things that are stumbling over every time. Those things that had to be moved out of the way. And he digs down. I like that. He digs. Notice what it says. He don't say he just dig down. It says he digs deep. He dig deep. There's some. St I believe when you dig deep, it hurts. I believe when you dig deep, man, you're 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 cutting in. You're cutting into some stuff that some people might. The neighbor might have come along and said, "You ain't got to go that far down." Hey, listen, I'm a. <laughs> You know, church people will say, you ain't got to give all that up. Jesus will take you just like you. Why don't you leave them alone? The Spirit of God is trying to get them to dig deep. Whoo! I remember when I went home, I first got born again. I remember my day. I told you my idol was music. I told you about my Columbia house. And when I went home, I, nobody had told me to do this. I went home and I gathered up all of my idols. And I had a 55-gallon drum in the backyard. This was back whenever you could get by with that stuff. And I piled all of my eight tracks, that's what they was, into that barrel. And I lit them on fire. I, I also went in the house and I grabbed albums and uh, LPs. I'm, I'm big. I messed up and grabbed some of my wife's stuff. I didn't mean to grab that. Uh, I, we, I put Elvis on the fire. I'm telling you, I, I, I had brought all that stuff out of the house and I laid it on the fire and I set and I torched it all. And I remember having a, a good friend go home with us that day and he was standing by the fire and he was looking through the stuff before we uh, ever lit it on fire. And he was going, I might have that when I said put it back. He said, well, you're going to just destroy it. Why can't I have it? I said, because if it ain't good for me, it ain't good for you. Don't try to stop somebody from digging deep. Mm. Oh, my goodness. I just, I'll never forget the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the passion that I felt, the, the drive and the calling that I felt. It, it made me think about when I, when I saw this message and God was pouring it out on me, I started to write three pages, but I got it down to one. And I, and I, was, I was thinking about how impassioned I was over this. Now, let me ask you a question. How long has it been since you've been so impassioned over something like that? That you go like, oh, Lord, I'm going home right now tonight, and I'm going to get rid of all of it. I'm going to pour it down the drain. I'm going to crumble them up and throw them in the toilet. I'm going to get, I'm going to flush it, amen. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not going to give it to a buddy of mine. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to tear it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unsubscribe if you have to do that. Hmm. I might have to, maybe you take a, a pair of side cutters out there and cut the cable. So you don't get that in your house anymore. I don't know. I don't know how far deep is for you. But he digged deep. And I believe when you go deep, some folks think you are a fanatic. But all you really are is you're hearing the sayings of Jesus and you're doing them. That's what he said in 47. Now, we find that that, how, that, that, that that first guy, when he digged down deep, he found the solid rock, and he laid on it a foundation with which to build. It became it integrated. The rock became integrated into his life. There's, there's something about 
incorporating Jesus into the decision making of the building of your life that will transform you from being uh, uh, someone who is tossed about by every wind of doctrine to being someone who is rock solid and steady. To being somebody who knows in whom they believe and am fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed that I know Jesus Christ to be the solid foundation. So it couldn't be shaken because he was on that solid rock. And he built his foundation there and integrated his home now upon the rock. Now we all know the rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. So he goes down and he finds just him and Jesus and he integrates the basic fundamentals of his life tied in together with the solid rock Jesus Christ. That's going to be the secret of the strength of his life. It could not be shaken because of that. The second man didn't even try a foundation. Now, I read a bunch of commentaries, and they had a, everybody's always got something to say. But I, some of them said stuff like, well, you know, uh, that maybe um, uh, they had other plans, you know, that, uh, that, that things hindered them from laying a foundation. I personally believe that the thing that hinders every man from laying a foundation for a relationship with Jesus Christ is what we would call self-idolatry. Self-idolatry, where you have placed yourself in the position of master of your life. Although you say master, master, or Lord, Lord, you really are still the one that calls the shots. And so therefore, you're not going to dig down deep. You're not going to want to put in a foundation. Why? Because you don't want to surrender anything. What you're looking to do is incorporate the master into your life instead of giving your life to the master. Amen. There's a big difference there. We're not talking about Jesus coming in and, 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 and easing into our life. Some folks say, well, just ask him in. He'll come into your life and make things better. That's the biggest lie I think I've ever heard. It's not about him coming into your life and trying to make your life better. It's about you dying to self and giving your life to him so that he can raise you up a new life. If that ain't never happened, then you ain't on the solid foundation. Hmm. The second man without a foundation, he didn't, he didn't even have a foundation. He just started building because all that mattered to him was what Joe saw or what, what Frank or Garnett saw. He's looking at what people around him because they love, they love to get the praise. Now, don't you get mad at me, but people like to come up in the church and have their, their self patted on the back, have somebody to swell them up with praise, going, man, you sure been doing good for the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so glad we got you. Jesus just all over you. I mean, we, we, they don't, we go like, yes, I am. I'm glad you noticed. And all we're, look, all we're looking for is for folks that can, they can see from the ground up. And the truth of the matter is there ain't no foundation there. I, I, I'm, I've been in this thing for 40 years. I've seen a bunch of them come and go. I've, I've actually been, I've been raised in all my life, so I guess I'd have to say I've been in it 60 years. I've seen a bunch come and go. I've seen some that come in like cannons, man, I'm telling you. Kaboom, kaboom, man, they were blowing everything off the planet. I mean, they were, they were firing every, everything. You said, man, I, I was thinking the devil's on. He's had it now, bless God. Brother so-and-so is here. He's going to blow everything back to hell, you know. And, 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 and then in a little while, a storm comes. And everything that he had built that looked so glamorous, and so impressive, and had us all going like, ah! it imploded. It just disintegrated. It says that the fall of that house was great. The ruin of that house was complete and total. The second man, no foundation. He was more concerned about, uh, uh, about the things that's above the ground than the things that was below the ground. Things you could see more than things you could not see. Um, you know what? Give me a man that will spend time in a closet with Jesus. 
and nobody else knows about it. Give me, give me somebody that's going to work when there ain't nobody else around to pat them on the back about that. Amen. Give me somebody, give me somebody when they drop their offering in the plate, they want to make sure ain't nobody giving them glory and honor for it. They don't have to announce it to folks. Give me somebody who loves Jesus so much they're willing to do a handout and not have to have a thank you for it. Amen. Give me somebody that's proud to serve the Lord. He's not worried about being seen. I think you guys get my illustration, my translation of this illustration out of Luke chapter 6. But before I let you go, let me tell you my, what I called my punchline earlier. Here's the secret I think I want you to see, is that chapter 6, verses 46 through 49, come on the end of chapter 6, verses 1 through 45. And if you was to look, <laughs> I know you knew that, but if you was to look back at chapter 6, and you was to see what he had done, I wrote this down so I wouldn't have to fumble through it. Jesus in chapter 6, he gives this illustration at the end of his teaching about why call ye me Lord, Lord. He says that to the group of people he's been teaching to already, his followers. Well, what did he say to him before he got here? I'm glad you asked. He said this. He said, love your enemies. He said, do good to them that despitefully use you. Amen. He said, if somebody smites you on one cheek, you can look it up yourself. He had the Beatitudes in there also, but I just skipped past the good stuff. <laughs> this, he said, if somebody takes your cloak away from you. Give them your coat also. You've read it, I guess, right? <laughs> He's also got it here, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. He says in there, in this chapter, just before we get to this stuff, he says, love them who hate you. He also says, lend to those who ask of you freely, not expecting anything in return. <laughs> he says, be merciful, for your Father up in heaven is merciful. He told them not to judge one another. Don't sit in judgment over one another. And give to anyone that asks of you. I ain't through yet. He, he said you, you, you need to introspect. You need to look inside of yourself. He, he told them that, um, uh, he says that a good tree bears good fruit. And you, you could know a tree by the fruit it bears. He talked about all of that stuff, and then he learned, turns to those same people after he gets through teaching all that, and he says, oh, by the way, a man that hears my sayings and does them. It's like a man who digs down deep and builds a house, and the storms of this life cannot shake it. He said, but you, you call me Lord. You shout it out as if you are professing it for all the world to know. Lord, Lord, Master, you're our teacher, you're our leader, you're our supreme power. Why do you do that? And then you don't apply anything that I say. When I saw that, I said, Lord, forgive us. We fall into that category. Amen. Lord, forgive us. No wonder our lives Amen. fall apart. No wonder our faith is so weak that when the smallest wind begins to blow, we begin to blow up the prayer chain with a trembling voice and great fear then the enemy is going to have his way with me. Why? Because the storms are going to come. My question is, how deep did you dig? If not, then the storm will shake your house. It cannot stand. If it's, if it's all right right now, bless God, you just wait around a little bit. The fall of it will be great and complete. And when it happens, when it takes place, you're going to think, oh my, God's done with me now. 
God's going to throw me out on the, on the, on the pile and, and I'll be nothing but rubbish and trash. I'm forgotten and cast away like a vessel that's been broken. But I don't want you to know today he doesn't throw broken vessels away. He puts them back on the wheel. And when your place gets absolutely ruined and washed out by the storms of life, that is the time for you to recognize there's nobody left but you and Jesus. You dig deep, integrate into that solid rock your foundation and begin to build that life that God's called you to. I've experienced this myself. I've seen it in the lives of those around me. Let me tell you what else I've also seen. I've also seen people build a home and get knocked down and build a home and they get knocked down and build a home and they get knocked down. They keep doing the same thing over again. You know they say that that is the definition of insanity because they're looking for a different outcome, but they keep doing the same old thing over and over again, thinking that next time it won't happen, and it keeps happening over and over again. They keep falling on their face and falling on their face and falling on their face, and, their face and you keep, and you keep saying, hey, man, bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. Cast all your cares on him, and he will restore you. And that is true. But you must dig deep. Remove the rubbish. Cast away all the idols that have been hindering you from serving him. Find the solid rock and begin to build. I didn't make this up. I saw this in verse 46, 47, and 48. Jesus said, you call me Lord, Lord, but you do not the things which I say. You call me Lord, but you're not demonstrating me as being Lord. You don't live your life with me being Lord. So if he's not Lord... Who is? Amen. We say he is. We come in. We put on the garment. We wear the badge. We sing the song. We toad the book. We shake the hands. We call them brothers. But yet, we don't do what he says. My question would be, who really is Lord then? We sit upon the throne of our own life. We ask those around us, would you pray for me, bless God? Would you please, and my life is just crumbling, would you pray for me? And all the while, Jesus has promised you that all of the blessings of heaven will be poured out upon you and that when the storms come, they will not, cannot, could not shake the house. Cannot. Now, he said that. If he says it, that settles it. That's right. He said, can I show you? So, when this, so if, this, if, it's been, if it's been knocking the shutters off of your house, if, if, listen, if it's been coming in your basement, you need to know this. It's time for you to get rid of the rubbish. Dig deep. Integrate your foundation of your life into the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Here here it is in simplicity, and I'll close. There has to be a time in your life. I don't know where and when for you. I know where it was for me. There's got to be a time in your life. Not only that you got born again. I got born again 40 years ago. But only a few years ago did I really, I really dig down deep and got rid of some stuff that had been cluttering up my ability to have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know if anybody even knows what I'm talking about. I'm just telling you. Amen. You've been there? I'm I'm just saying, I've been living a lot of years on a very shaky, a very shaky um, uh, existence. Uh, I I mean, I, I, I could, I would exist in this world just like every other unbeliever, except for the fact that I went to church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And I did have faith in God. But I'm telling you, the things of this world affected me just like they did everybody. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. I'm just saying that I, that's the way my life was going. And when I found myself 
where there was everything else had been swept away and there was nothing but the solid rock and me. I thought myself to be a castaway. I thought myself, Lord, just kill me, take me out of here, and make everybody's life better. I'm not worthy. And he said, this is where I've been trying to get you all along. Yeah. I've been trying to get you here ever since. You kept thinking that you could impress me by all the stuff you was piling up on top. I think my house might have been built a lot with duct tape if you know me. I find something looks good, I'll tape it on. Amen. Because if it looks good, then it might impress them. So I'm, you know, I don't know if I'm, I'm talking to you or not. Uh, so I'm building this thing. And all the while he was waiting for it all to crumble. So when, it, when the flood receded and the stream was gone, and I'm laying there lifeless, empty, Deserted, destitute. I find his love, his light, and his will for my life became illuminated. You then integrate into that. You say, Lord, if this is going to happen, if you're going to use me like this, if you're going to work through me, you're going to have to do something because I can't do it on my own. Amen. You're going to have to build me because I can't build me. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to be the reason that I stand because I can't stand. And I'm here to tell you today he'll do just exactly that. Amen. The work is not in the building. The work is in the digging deep. I just wonder if there's anybody here tonight that's ready to dig. Anybody here tonight that's ready to throw some rubbish out of the way. Say, Lord, I, I, I feel like I've been on a, a, a very uh, unstable foundation. And Lord, tonight I'm ready to remove some. I haven't, I don't think I've ever got down to brass tacks with dealing with just me and you so that I could then rise up from the ashes and stand to be a trophy of your grace. Mm. We call him Lord, but the evidence will be in doing what he says do. My question to you tonight, how are you doing with that? I'm gonna, let me close out with this. In, in this multitude Jesus was talking to, there was various people of all types there. Um, there's different motivations in the people for why they were there. If you read back in that chapter, you'll find many of them just wanted to touch him because they found out that whoever got close enough to touch him, they were healed. And so they had went for a physical healing. Well, that sounds so familiar, doesn't it? Some of them was wanting financial blessing. Some of them was wanting physical blessing. Some of them maybe wanted relationships healed. Some of them maybe wanted to just feel better about themselves. I don't know. There was multitudes of various motivations of why people were there and different outcomes that happened from the end of this message. But I want you to know the message was singular. The message was singular. It was the same to every man and woman and boy and girl that was there. Are you listening to me? The message doesn't change according to who it goes to. The message is singular. It's one. It's one message. It's the same gospel. It is the same Savior. There's only one. It's Jesus. You must come by the same way. But the truth of the matter is, there was two houses. Same message, two houses. Same Savior, two houses. Right? Same gospel, two different outcomes. What about you? There's some that heard and did. And some that heard and would not do. Only two categories. Leads me to ask this tonight. What about you? Which category? Would you be in? I'm going to bow my head and I'm going to pray. Altars are always open. If God's dealt with you tonight, this will be a good place to begin to shovel the rubbish out of your life. 
Fathers, I bow before you. I thank you for the gift of everlasting life. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful attachment of the Holy Spirit that you told us, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Lord, you told us in these verses that if we hear, we must obey. We got to do if you're going to be Lord in our life. I believe, God, without that, that we are just carnal Christians. We're powerless. We declare the power of God, but we deny that power. We preach it and we shout about it, but we don't demonstrate it. We don't live in it. We certainly don't benefit from it. Tonight, we don't want to be the house that falls and has great ruin. Lord, we want to be the man who hears and does the sayings of the Lord so that we will have a strong building in the Lord. Bless this, your people, tonight. Help us realize that these trying times will come, but we will not be shaken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys, and thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Lord willing, we will see you the next Lord's Day, Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 930 for our General Assembly. For our worship service, it is my prayer that you have heard from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904-924-924. 8240 or you can email me at pastor p a s t o r at l r b c j a x dot org until next time may god be richly blessing you